Hey guys, Dislitter Magic here, and it's time to reveal a new deck that I sort of built for fun. Everybody knows I love blue, I love white, I love black, and I love to play the mono because it just keeps it simple, it's consistent, and you don't get, you know, color screwed 10% of the time or whatever. So I built this classic black deck, and I mean classic black. I mean, this is what black does, it's what black has always done. It is absolutely the most cliche thing ever. And apparently because it was built on one of the main tenants of the game, it is powerful. Now I just built this as like a silly novelty deck, thought I'd throw it out there, just something kind of cheap and fun. And then it turned out to be not so cheap, it is most certainly fun though. And uh, I accidentally built a deck that basically can't be stopped and can't be beaten. Oops. There is only one thing that can stop this and it's board wipes. And you're going to say, oh no, there's other ways to stop it. No, board wipes. That's it. Nothing else in standard right now can stop this. Or at least nothing I can think of. I mean, even the really obscure cards just cannot stop this. It can't be stopped. The power of black cannot be stopped. And you're going to see why in a second. Now, I alluded to this in my previous video, but uh, the main tenant of the deck is the four instants that are in it. And there are only four instants for a total of 16. It's four of each. First, you got Butcher's Glee. Costs three, one of the more expensive ones, but it's plus three, lifelink, and regenerate. So you're going to gain a boatload of life. Usually, I mean, I would say four to, well, six, realistically. And you're going to regenerate and almost definitely kill what you're hitting. It's one of the most powerful cards that exist right now, so costing three is very appropriate. And we're about to lose it because it's in dragons. But it's a common, so you should have no problem getting your hands on it. Next up, we've got Coat with Venom, which I thought was illegal. Who knew? But uh, it only costs one, so dirt cheap. One of the less effective ones, but target creature gets plus one, which doesn't matter at all. Uh, plus two, which matters a huge amount, and then gains death touch until end of turn. So for one mana, that's pretty good because it's pretty likely you'll survive, and if you don't, it's usually a really good trade. You can use it defensively, offensively, whatever you want. It's the perfect spell. Next up, we've got a more recent addition from Shadows. It's Grotesque Mutation, the number one card that pointed out that Emrakul is probably going to show up. Hey, look, she did. Uh, for two mana, so right in the middle, you get plus three, plus one, and lifelink. So no regen, no death touch, but... Hey, it's plus three, plus one. I mean, they're probably going to live through it, and if they don't, you're going to be at, like, 26 life, so who cares? I guarantee with plus three, you just took out whatever was blocking you, too. And then, of course, there's the one cost, a uh, definite suicide spell. Target creature you control gets plus one, which is completely unnecessary, and death touch. Uh, you're supposed to use it on, like, an 4 blocker or something, so now it gets plus one, whatever. So plus one, and you can use the plus one as win condition if you were about to hit them for one and they have two life left, I guess. Um, but yeah, basically target creature you control gets plus one plus zero and gains death touch until end of turn. Fantastic. But here's the <laughs> kicker, not literally. Uh, whenever a creature dealt damage by that creature dies, so the one you boosted, uh, this turn its controller loses two life. So basically you boost a creature if somebody blocked it or if a creature is swinging you blocked and then cast this on the blocker. If the creature it is fighting, blocking, attacking, whatever, if it dies this turn, the owner of that creature takes two. So basically you're going to kill off one of the creatures and they lose two life. That's important because this isn't like a swing for five flying demon deck, you know, or vampires or any kind of boost or anything. So every little point counts. This is kind of like red wins, but black wins. And trust me, black wins because wait till you see the creatures. So this is 16 spells of ambush just ready to just toast the person. And as soon as they figure out what's going on, because you keep casting these, they keep losing creatures by blocking. They're going to figure out, oh crap, okay. I'm never going to be able to safely block ever. They're going to have to start letting things through, and if they don't let them through, they lose creatures. So they're never going to win with creatures. Well, unless, of course, they out-damage you, but with all the life gain, I don't think that'll happen. I did go up against my uh, red-blue prowess deck, and it was a toss-up. It was pretty close, but the fact that this even competes with it is insane. So first up for creatures, we've got one of the most underrated creatures in standard right now for black. It's Thornbow Archer. Everybody sees, oh, elves, elves, elves. Oh, crap. I, it has to do with elves. I can't put it in because I have to build an elf deck. No, you idiot. It's a 1-2 for 1. Plus, it's really like a 2-2 two, two for 1 because whenever Thornbow Archer attacks, each opponent who doesn't control an elf loses one life. And let's be honest, they don't control an elf. If they do, they won't for long because they'll block with it and lose it. I honestly can't think of one single elf that people play right now, so no problem there. 
Plus, it's a one-two. People are going to want to block it. They think they can survive this, so it's a trap regardless. And if they don't have elves in their deck, or at least not on the field, every single time you swing, they're going to be taking one damage, whether it's blocked or not. So they want that gone ASAP, and you could have dropped that on turn one. That's why there's four of them in the deck. Next up, we've got kind of an afterthought, not very important to the deck, but it's neat. I like it. Uh, it's Vampire Cutthroat. It has Skulk, which is kind of completely not the point at all, because then it, they can't block, and then you can't ambush them. But it has Lifelink, so if you give it just a boost, and then don't give it Lifelink, because some of the uh, instants do that, then you're going to be gaining a lot of life, and um, you might be able to pre-boost it, swing, and then boost it again as an ambush. I don't know. I just like it because it's a 1-1 one, one for 1, and it gets through, and you gain life constantly like i said you're only going to lose if they can out hit you on damage faster than you can deal damage to them so every little bit that you can gain back really 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 helps next up we've got an old classic i absolutely love this guy silumgar assassin so if this deck wasn't annoying enough suddenly you pay three slap down a card face down and tell your opponent it's a morph now I, they're pretty sure it's a Megamorph because only Dragons is legal right now, and they were almost exclusively, if not exclusively, Megamorphs. But I'd give them a medal if they actually guessed what it was, uh, before seeing it, I should say. So it's a 2-1 Megamorph. If you cast it for three, flip it back for three more so you can split turns, whatever. Um, and it'll become a 3-2 if you Megamorph it. So that's pretty good for two mana, even though obviously you'd be paying six at that point. But, um... Regardless, creatures with power greater than Silumgar Assassin can't block it. That's huge. I mean, I hate these can't be blocked things, but they're game finishers, and there's really only um, six of them in the entire deck anyway. Plus, you can flip it up as an ambush. That's three damage right there. Just, you know, send a boost spell their way. That only costs one, and you're good to go. Plus, here's the kicker. Ha ha. Once again, not an actual kicker. They need to bring kicker back. I like it. Uh, when Silumgar Assassin is turned face up, destroy target creature with power three or less and opponent controls. Free kill spell, which this deck has almost none of. So, uh, if you can't get them with the ambush blocks and something's bugging you or they refuse to block with something, but you absolutely need to get it off the field because it's like passively triggering something boom silumgar there you go next up we've got an absolute classic uh wasn't really my first choice for the deck feel free to swap it out if you don't like it i think it's hilarious because they really kind of do want to block it but they really don't and then if you keep him on the field it's even worse but he's a one one for one and whenever he dies target creature and opponent controls gets negative one negative one until end of turn there's a lot of really really weak creatures out there especially um i wouldn't say werewolves but uh some spirits only have one toughness you know you guys know and of course, if you deal one damage with the Shambling Goblin, and then when he dies, you deal an additional negative one, negative one, the creature effectively sort of like took two, so you could kill off just about anything, and then if you boosted it on top of that, oh my gosh. Another complete nuisance the second it hits the field. That's why I love this deck. Your opponent just wants to get rid of everything you bring out, and they already feel like they're losing on turn three. Hey, you know why that is? Because they are losing on turn three. Next up, we've got the creature that is single-handedly keeping this from truly being a budget deck, but the creatures are so unimportant, and this one, it's just not that necessary. Uh, it's funny, though, but if you don't have the money, this deck will function just fine without it. It's three copies, at least, of Relentless Dead. It's a 2-2 with Menace, so you're either going to keep doing two damage over and over and over and over and over and over and over, and over or they're going to have to block it, and they're going to have to block it with two creatures. Guess what happens when they block it with two creatures? Cast any instant I just named on it, take out both the creatures, and live to tell the tale. Um, if you just simply hit it with Coat with Venom, and it gets the uh, plus one, plus two death touch with no regen, you just pay one to basically regen it, except it returns to your hand. You have to recast it eventually, and then it you know has summoning sickness and stuff, but, you know, whatever. It's hilarious. It's a two-for-one special, and it's a lot of aggro in this deck, at least. Speaking of a lot of aggro, we've got the killer herself, the highest attack power creature in the deck. Only costs two, but it hits for three. Gotta love it. Um, at the beginning of each player's upkeep, so yours and theirs, if that player has no cards in hand, so either of you, you could burn out your whole hand and this will benefit you, you draw a card and lose one life. That's huge because you keep the foot on the gas, as they say. You'll just keep hitting them. And if they're top decking, you're not. I mean, it's just so hilarious. Madness, who cares? Not going to come up ever. Not in this deck. But yeah, 3-1. I mean, and then who cares if it dies? That's the other thing. They're getting hit for three. It only has one toughness. They want to block this with anything. Anything that they possibly can to get rid of it. And then, oh, look at that. I regened it. Oh, look at that. I gave it plus three lifelink, and now I don't care that it's dead. Ha ha ha. 
Oh, I love it. And don't worry about the losing one life. I mean, there's so much lifelink in this deck, it just doesn't matter. So, pretty sneaky creature lineup so far, right? And you're going to be swinging pretty much every turn. Just keep the pressure on, keep the aggro going. If they block, they lose. If they don't block, they lose. It's just hilarious, right? Guess what? We're not done yet. Four copies of Drana, Liberator of Malakir. That's right. They're like seven dollars now so i'd still consider it kind of budget considering i think they were like 22 or something at one point now this is incredibly important it's flying it's first strike that's missing from the whole rest of the deck pretty much um whenever drawn a liberator of malakir deals combat damage to a player put a 1-1 counter on each attacking creature you control hey look it's first strike not double strike first strike so first drawn flies through the air hits the opponent next immediate trigger every single attacking creature that you own gets a 1-1 counter then normal damage phase happens so all of your creatures are one bigger if the people that you're playing against do not know the drana trick as they call it well then drana is a self-contained ambush plus with you swinging every single turn they know they can't block it and live so they got to keep you know pulling creatures out of their hand over and over and over till they run out now your creatures are getting bigger every single swing and they've got a giant first striking you know ultra vampire like floating through the air i mean it's just so insane and then if they try to blow it up with just an outright kill spell you can give it butcher's glee and regenerate it all this deck is missing is a way to actually pull drana out of the uh graveyard but you know you know if they manage to remove it whatever who cares you've got other creatures so that is the whole deck, 23 creatures, 16 spells, kind of wish it was more, but there's no other good ambush spells that are, like, reliable. And, of course, it runs 21 lands, because as soon as you get to 3, you're basically good. So, um, I wanted to put in 20, but you tend to really get 1 land hands when you go to 20, so... Uh, this is, you know, and it's really important to get to 3 for Butcher's Glee if that's all you're holding. It's really important to get to Drana level uh, mana, and, you know, some of the effects you want to go off, like you want to cast a creature for 2 or well probably in reverse you want to ambush them for one and then cast a creature for two or ambush them for two cast a creature for one so you really want to get to three or four with this deck and then you're good if you pull more super ambush for the win no problem this deck is so so utterly simple but i tested it against every single deck i have that's standard and some that aren't and this just crushed everything in its path i mean yeah, the AI should have caught on to the fact that I was, you know, ambushing them over and over and over, but what are they going to do? Stop blocking? If they stop blocking, they lose, and if they keep blocking, they lose. So in other words, they lose. I should just call this deck They Lose, but of course I called it Surprise with an exclamation mark. You gotta write it with the exclamation mark. You could also call it Classic Black. You could also call it, um, I don't know, Super Ambush. I, there's, I came up with like a dozen names and then just picked Surprise because I'm not that creative. So let me know what you think. Um, hopefully you guys can uh, assemble this deck. Honestly, if you don't put in Relentless Dead and, I mean, I would really put in Drana. Drana is like it, but Relentless Dead is, I think, still like 12 bucks a copy or something. It's not pretty. I don't know, Sanitarium Skeleton, it's a 1-2 for 1, and you know that kind of like convinces them to block it, and then for 3 you can return it from your graveyard to your hand and just recast it later. It's basically there for the entire game, no matter what. That actually is more flexible and more reliable over multiple turns than, you know, always keeping one mana around for Relentless Dead. Hand of Silumgar is classic because it's a 2-1 Death Toucher, but I think the deck had too much, like, don't block me creatures, and the whole point is to get them to block you. And of course, what would be the point of granting this Death Touch? So that got kicked out of the deck, but it's an option. The Spoiler of Souls is cool, but I don't think that your creatures are going to go to the graveyard often enough to make use of his ability. It is a 3-1 for 2, though, so why not? If you think you can get away with it, and if you just don't like there being 16 spells, because honestly, I don't. Um, Dark Dabbling, regenerate target creature, draw a card, and then Spell Mastery, regenerate all of the creatures you control, and then draw a card. Hello. Still an instant. Cost three, little high. Didn't want to go that high, because I don't want the deck to just sit there and do nothing until I get to three. But you can maybe creep up the spell count to 18 or something if you find yourself just having to remove way too many creatures with Ambush. Now, as for the sideboard, this is where it gets hilarious. Vampire Envoy, a flying 1-4, and every time it becomes tapped for any reason, you gain one life. Uh, that's a big honkin' flying iceberg. I mean, that can block anything, and you can still, you know, ambush block. Then I would pick out, like, one more flyer if you're doing, like, a concept sideboard, which this would almost have to be. So, concept one, or I would make it concept two, the minor concept, would be, um to block flyers you know because if they've got nothing but flyers you might be in a little bit of trouble but 
Not really. I mean, at a certain point, they have to stay back and start blocking, and that's when they all die. And they're running some stupid gimmicky crap. Get out. Infinite Obliteration. Trust me, they deserve it. Name a creature card. Search everything they own, pretty much, and get rid of it. Good luck winning the game without Emrakul, dick. Another fun one is if you tend to kill their creatures and they're really important giant awesome creatures or, you know, they got just something amazing, like some emerge creature or something, I don't know. Um, you know, because those, those they, they're really powerful, but they come out at, like, a discount, you know, so they're interesting. Then I would go with Necromantic Summons and, of course, Rise from the Grave. And there's your eight cards because you always want to build, you know, a split sideboard if it's concept sideboard where you do seven of one thing eight of another because if you just do four of one thing you're never going to pull the card in a game it'll be it's like 30 some percent or something of pulling one out of the four so those yeah they cost five i mean that kind of sucks i would almost like throw one swamp in the uh, sideboard as well which is not a great idea but one swamp is enough to swing it but yeah you ambushed and killed their best creature even worse now you brought it out onto the graveyard or from their graveyard onto your battlefield and now you're hitting them with it now the other thing is if you really didn't want to put in um real endless dead or like drana or whatever there, there are 23 creatures you could just straight up cut the four dranas i would so not recommend it but if you do put in remorseless punishment yeah it costs five i would go to 22 or 23 land for sure then but i mean why sit there and dick around with oh i hope they block so i can ambush and remove them no just cast remorseless punishment make them get rid of well basically two creatures theoretically either that or go down 10 or go down five and lose a creature you guys know how this works you know it's target opponent loses five life unless that player discards two cards or sacrifices a creature planeswalker then repeat this process one additional time i bet if they had room they would have titled the card okay now you're really losing because like you were losing before but now you're really losing or they could have named it oh you have no creatures i just won the game you're basically granting the madness, but if they have their uh, land all tapped out, it would be pretty funny to cast this. So those are the options. This is by no means the absolute mathematical, flawless, ideal lineup of creatures. I mean, there's a couple creatures that consider be kicked out. Um, you do want to keep it cheap. You do want to keep it quick, which is what I focused on. But, you know, if you're just thinking, oh, I don't like Shambling Goblin. I don't think it'll kill anything. You could swap it out with just about anything else. No problem. This deck isn't like hard locked into a combo going off or anything. It's just is what it is. So hopefully you guys have fun with it. Um, I plan to build it and just destroy Friday Night Magic. Not um, this Friday, but the one after, hopefully. And I'll let you know how it goes. Until then, I'll see you guys next video.